All right, it's that time again, time for another solo over Nutter in the Woods. Last week we're standing here in the snow, today I'm wearing a t-shirt. Strange things are afoot. Let's get to it. All right, so we're one month into 2024, and here's a channel assessment and update real quick before we get started here. We kicked the year off strong, doing things that no one else is doing, and that's a fact. No one's doing metal work, no one's doing the woodworking, no one's doing all the skills during the week, and then using all that stuff at the end of the week. Creating things from nothing, bronze casting, stuff like that. Showing you what to do in case you had to ever do this in some type of end of the world scenario. And no channel's doing that. Most channels just talk, or they just do sporadic random things. And you guys wanted a change, demanded a change, and I gave you that change. And Here's the results of that change. For the ninth time in four years, it was met with disaster. It's worse 10 of 10, most refuse to watch, they just glaze over it and don't care. So that tells me you want the same old thing. So I'm thinking for this shelter here, we got mud everywhere, I wanna get off the ground. I wanna cover my shelter, I wanna trap that heat. So let's get to it. Oh, and it's gonna be something, once again, that nobody's done. We have two trees right here that's the perfect width for a raised bed. However, we have no trees in this location right here at all. So what do we do? Well, you have several, several options. I'm thinking something simple and something I've never done on my channel. An X brace. Pound it into the ground right here, pound one diagonal, tie them off. Now we're the same width as those two trees. Then simply run our horizontals to the trunks. So there's a simple arbor knot. I'm gonna tie this thing off. That bushcraft zip tie. Make a knot here so it won't go anywhere. There we go. So all you have here, if you think about it, is a bipod that's locked into the ground. So it's not gonna spread out on you because it's hammered in probably a good eight or nine inches. So it's not gonna spread away from you. It's tied off right here, so it's not gonna break apart the top either. The only fear you're gonna have is it might rock forward and back, but adding some type of ridge pole, if you wanted to go that way with a shelter. But in my case, we're putting two poles here horizontally, which will lock it in place here and over there. And then, Worst case, if I want to add a ridge pole later on, I can. It will be tied off in three different spots. So it's going to be locked in and it's not going to go anywhere. This end over here, once again, we'll tie an arbor knot. There's no need to use six foot of cordage for a lash when you're using number 36 or number, or number 40 bank line. No need to overcomplicate, convolute, and try to reinvent the already reinvented wheel. One and done. And just lock it off. So the theory was sound, the X brace is pounded into the ground, so the gravity pushing it down from body weight, it can't go anywhere this way. Lock it in with our horizontal poles to create our bed, it's not going back and forth either. So it worked out well. And once again, a hammer, or in this case an axe, and arbor knots. Done deal.
So along with this X-brace bed, which is a first on my channel, I'm gonna take a tarp, we're gonna tie it off to our horizontals, wrap it over, under, then diagonally over top of us to create a shelter bed using one tarp. So now from here, we're gonna go ahead and take it, we're gonna tuck it underneath and wrap it under and then over. So now we're gonna place our ridge pole on here. We can always cut it to size if we need to. There we go. So hopefully this will work out. In theory it should. I'm gonna wrap this over the top here. Now this one here, we're gonna to have to tuck it in a little bit. Probably from this first loop to the second loop here get this all tucked in. So now, taking this tucked in portion here, we'll get the edge of our tarp there, and then pull the rest of it over top of our ridge pole. And look at that. There should be enough material left over here to actually stake this thing out and open it like this, that way we'll trap that heat. Haven't tied a bull in a while, so we'll go ahead and do that for practice around the tree and then back into the hole again. And we want to pinch them both together, pull tight, just like that. And there we have our one tarp system that creates a stretcher bed and overhead cover to trap the heat and keep the rainwater off of you. Over, under, over. So here's the reality of something like this. This is all mud, okay? No one's gonna lay out here in the ground. And those that claim that when they go out, they just cowboy camp on the ground, no matter what, they're sitting in their backyard with very little to no experience. No one's gonna throw a blanket and lay on top of this. No one's going to. The mud, the wet mud's gonna soak through a blanket. You're gonna be wet and cold all night. You need to have something underneath you to prevent that conduction, meaning your body's contact with the cold surface pulling your heat away. This right here is off the ground. It's not a good idea during the wintertime. Why? Because of convection. The cold air is gonna blow around me and take that body heat off. However, what do we create? By going over, under, and over, we created a stretcher bed with a hollow tube inside of it. Now I can stuff this with insulation the campfire out front here will move underneath as well, keeping the underside warm, trapping the heat above me because heat rises, forcing it back down on top of me, so I should be warm all night. So all this yellow stuff here is all dry, and we'll use all of this for bedding. And you just go through here and try to stay away from stuff that's wet.
right. Here we go. Outstanding. Mm. Catch you all in a few. So using all that dead debris for insulation, it's actually comfortable. And uh, I can actually feel the heat underneath me as well as right here. It's probably about 45, 46 degrees outside right now, Fahrenheit. And uh, it's gotta be probably 75 right here. Again, I'm in a t-shirt. Last week we were, you know, buttoned up and it was like six degrees outside. But this tarp right here is that Free Soldiers tarp. It's on my Amazon affiliate page in my video description box. And after doing this with the tarp and seeing that's holding my body weight, I'm 228 pounds right now. And there's no problem. There's no stress on this at all. It's locked in here. It's tied off to these poles and it's not going anywhere. So this is a one and done tarp. While I'm thinking about it, we started the fire with that pyro putty. That worked out well too. I used that stuff about three years ago and kind of walked away from it, but I've used it in two or three videos now and I'm sold on that stuff. That's also my video description box under my Amazon affiliate page. If you're interested in either one of these, check them out. Um, leave them a review and tell them I sent you. As usual, we got a protein up. Add this to my five to six meals a day. Mm. Catch you all with you. For me, for the past four years, every overnighter I've done at this time of the year has been the best. There's no wind, overcast skies, small fire like this with a proper shelter, you're warm all night. And just your clothing or some small poncho liner is all you're gonna need. Um, the key thing is a proper shelter. And that ties into what I talked about before about cowboy camping. There's a large misconception, and I've flirted with actually showing that and doing that, because there's a lot of different ways. People think of cowboy camping, and the ones with no experience say, I just throw a, throw a blank on the ground, I just lay there. Well, again, if you're gonna lay in wet mud, you basically screwed yourself for the night. There's ways to get around stuff, and there's things that you should and shouldn't do. And maybe we'll get into that down the road, um, but it's just comical to watch people with no experience talk about their kits and they have all these things and they're all brand new and I do this all the time and yet they never have any videos and they just talk a big game, you know. Um, you're not fooling nobody. Um, the reality is if you're out there week after week after week, you're going to show that. You're going to show the techniques, you're gonna show the tips and tricks. You're actually going to be out there doing it. And again, no one's going to lay in two inches of mud and just lay there. You're not going to do that. So. I'll think about it, put something together, and uh, maybe drop that in a few weeks. See how the weather goes, because it's supposed to rain here. It's the rainy season now, so we'll figure it out. The Etsy store is open. It's open seven days a week, but most seem to wait till Sunday. Um, cold handle skillets are inside there as we speak. We have 50 cup and bottle sets that just dropped, and that will be the last 50 for a while. We have our OD green hoodies in there. I just dropped 50 more in there. Um, the key number, there's 50. And again, those are seasonal. Another month, month and a half, they're gonna be gone. So if you want one, you wanna get another one, you wanna give some for gifts, you might wanna grab them now because we're gonna move into something else once we get to warmer weather. And I'm just gonna dump the hoodies till next season. So if you want one, jump on them. 50 of them just dropped. Along with that, we have our meat forks, we have our regular forks, we have the strikers, and I figured out a way to make the spoons. So those that continue to miss the midweek videos, you missed 
this last one where I made a spoon to match the fork. The problem was the time to make one. And I think I figured it out. So give me a week and if it works out, we'll drop some. Other than that, not a lot going on, except the standard midweek videos. At some point here in the future, we're gonna be doing three videos a week, so that can be seen and heard. That's what YouTube wants, so that's what we're gonna have to do. Um, on that note, let's end this bad boy off. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon affiliate page, and two, my Etsy store. Both links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun, and I'm going to catch you next time.